Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, brothers, sisters, friends, enemies, frenemies, whoever happens to tune in. I have a I have a video I want to share with you of false NAR iPad prophet Sean Bolts. Um speaking of the Asbury revival, he even speaks a little bit about the Jesus Revolu Revolution movie um in typical NAR fashion that he promotes things and he he condemns and ostracizes anyone who even does not pass judgment but says they're going to reserve judgment until they find out more information. And uh, let's just get right into this. He it's got <laughs> you don't want to listen to a NAR false prophet, but the NAR iPad false prophet Sean Bolts is a really different flavor. Let's check him out. That's when the young people started to chant, Jesus, Jesus. And it felt like a glimpse of what heaven would be like when all the saints and angels gather around the throne crying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. I well, I want to talk about our main story today. We have two main stories. One is the revival at Asbury and what's happening now, but we also have uh, right after that, I'm going to talk about the Jesus Revolution, and I have a prophetic perspective that, of what I think God's doing right now. Oh. This man is a proven false prophet, who uh, indeed, I believe he was one of the false prophets who uh, rebuked COVID-19, along with Bill Johnson and Cheyenne, uh, the false apostles, and I believe... He may have been on the Trump Trump re-election prophecy bandwagon, but I'm not quite certain about that. But I do know that he did prophecy that the COVID-19 pandemic would pass quickly, and that didn't happen. Let's check him out. Now, but we have 30 plus campuses now reporting protracted, protracted meetings and outpouring. In my perspective about this, I want to kind of give you a, not a deep dive, but just a dive into it because I was looking at YouTube. A deep dive, a deep dive into the false prophet viewpoint of the situation. See, what adds to any founded or unfounded skepticism were these particular people. One of the things that actually adds to some legitimacy of what happened at Asbury is the fact that they kept these people out of involvement. They would not allow Todd Bentley to be involved. They would not allow Greg Locke to be involved or anyone else who came to, they only allowed them to be spectators, which in my opinion adds to the credibility of whatever happened. Although there's a lot of viewpoints out there. And there's probably as much, bad commentary on YouTube is good. And it's really interesting because for me, looking at some of the YouTubers that. Okay. So any, anything, anything anyone said, um, that detracts whatsoever that isn't positive. See, that's all of the, that's all of what a false prophet does. They give, they, they're not going to give a balanced word on anything. And if you say anything whatsoever to the derogatory, or bring out something. It doesn't matter whether it's a true and accurate assessment of reality or not. It's it's the see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil, evil of the false prophet world. If you if you don't legitimately look at things and critique them and bring a balanced perspective, you are a liar. Nothing nothing is all good. Nothing is all good without any, any, uh, nothing of what man does. Every good and every perfect gift is from above coming down from the father of heavenly lights in whom there is no variance or shadow of turning. Everything done on earth by man is subject to examination, test prophecy, hold on to what is good and re refuse what is evil are reporting about it or having commentary on it who are negative haven't even visited or seen or experienced it for themselves 
And God is beautiful because you find him in the word, but you also find that the manifest presence of God, where the omnipresent God is everywhere all at once, he also manifests his presence throughout history at different times to create hunger. If we were creating, a, if this was false, pring, false prophet bingo, um, there you got manifests. He manifests. Um, I don't know. To create a sense of closeness to Jesus, but also sometimes to commission revival, commission to God activity on the earth. And we saw this, and we'll talk about this for the Jesus Revolution segment, but we saw this in the Jesus Revolution period when there was a revival in America that spread around the world where people all of a sudden had their moral compass back, where nuclear family was being honored again, where the family had broken down so much and had some of the lowest statistics over nuclear family and marriage. Um, Mr. Boltz, where's your statistics? Where's your fact-based realities that prove that to be the case? Not, nothing in a nuclear family, not, no divorce statistics, no, no fatherless rate has improved since 1971, from 1965 to 1971. None of it. Okay? So you're claiming that the Jesus revolution had effects that are statistically unverifiable and in in our society okay in our society 1970 1980 the 1990s the nuclear family did not become stronger it became weaker are there certain circumstances of maybe people who gave their lives to christ and those families had a transformation yes but in larger society it has not improved and you're denying reality God wouldn't have you tell a lie that doesn't bring him any glory. In his modern history, all of a sudden there was a healing over a few years over nuclear family and over marriage. And we're going to see some incredible things come. And divorce rates among people who profess to be Christians are equal to or in excess of people who are non-believers. You can't just make things up and claim them as facts. Come out of this, but the Wesleyan Movement School has a tradition of revivals and a theology that teaches people to wait and watch for the divine wind of God to blow. The university is named for Francis Asbury, the early American Methodist bishop who encouraged and celebrated revivals from Maine to Georgia and Maryland to Tennessee. So this is a Methodist-based school. There's also people in the Kentucky community who have longed for fresh revival yeah, you know, at the school, including a Malaysian theological teacher who sometimes walked the streets with a cardboard sign that said, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. I think that's so special. The last night of the official college campus version of Asbury. The, the only thing I could think of, you need to walk around with a sandwich board on saying, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Do you think if God wants to do something, he cares whether you say he's welcome or not. And the only thing I can think of that's possibly worse than what he just said is a recent story I heard of Lonnie Frisbee in um, some type of thing that they, this is one of their claims of the superpower and moves of the spirit. Lonnie Frisbee says, come Holy Spirit and this power just, the Holy Spirit is not a dog. Jesus is not a genie you rub to have some manifestation according to your will. So whatever came when Lonnie Frisbee said, Holy Spirit, come. And it knocked people down or pushed people over or made people craft, cry out or laugh, or whatever. My, my bet is on it wasn't the Holy Spirit. And, and it just grieves my heart to hear someone say, Holy Spirit, come. That's all he said. Like he was commanding the Holy Spirit. This, this person's idea of legitimacy is, is based on a lot of illegitimate beliefs and visions and personal aggrandizement.
fairy outpouring happened on February 23rd, and so many sovereign God incidences have been evident throughout this awakening, from the 1970 Asbury Revival Connection, to the release of Jesus Revolution movie that's been in the works for years, to the coincidence with the College of Day of Prayer, no earthly power could have really timed this this perfectly, and no matter where it goes from here. Okay, one, I'd have to know, why can, that's, this, this isn't really complicated. You had the date of the National Collegiate Day of Prayer. You had the specified date of the release of the movie. You had the 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 very convenient outbreak of revival. Uh, what was it? Literally two weeks, fourteen days before the National Collegiate Day of Prayer, and that Friday, the release of the movie. Why why couldn't why couldn't that be done by human means? And if it wasn't done by human means, um, why does that mean it was something orchestrated by God? I'm not saying it wasn't, but if it was done by supernatural means, aren't there other supernatural means that can do things? You know, you're just making a lot of assumptions. It's, it's good to be have a positive outlook, but the Bible doesn't tell us to make assumptions. It says, It says to... Judge nothing before the appropriate time. Yeah. It's it's really undeniable that this generation is full of souls who hunger and thirst for Jesus. We're seeing that more and more. And we really feel like this generation is going to be filled. Generation Z has been so marred as a generation of anxiety and depression and suicidal ideation, as well as sexual identity issues. And a number of the students spoke directly during Thursday night's national event about their struggles with these types of issues, telling the new measures of freedom and hope that they found because of this outpouring, that Jesus is changing them from the inside out. And they no longer need to let these struggles define who they are. It was genuine and it was powerful. Adult speakers declared that God is marking this generation in such a way that it's genuine and powerful due to your testimony. And by the way, were you there? You, you just made a comment that the negative, what you consider negative criticisms of people were made by those who weren't there. But you're affirming legitimacy and authenticity while you weren't there? Hmm. Typical. That the lives of those who have participated in the outpouring will never be the same. They'll never be satisfied by the empty distraction of this world. Nothing but the presence of Jesus. The last night was filled. <laughs> um, you know what? There's there's lives of people around the time period that Jim Jones was experiencing massive growth and financial success. And though the lives of those people will never be the same either. Okay, the lives of um, the people who were fellowshipping with David Koresh, those lives will never be the same either. Lives never being the same is not is not the mark of something and its origin or its after effects. There are a lot of questionable outcomes that have uh, infiltrated the church from the Jesus revolution. With moments of consecration, scripture, worship, a focus on adopting every college campus for prayer, an expression of desire to reach the nations, and a salvation message in which a number of souls profess newfound faith in Jesus, even on the last night. When it was time for a scheduled event to wrap up, the adult leaders of the College at Day of Prayer began to conclude the night with some very incredible thoughts and prayer. But after 350 plus hours of continuous revival, there was still a lingering sense that God wasn't done, and he sure wasn't. That's when the young people started to chant, Jesus, Jesus. And it felt like a glimpse of what heaven would be like when all the saints and angels gather around the throne crying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. I it felt like a glimpse of what heaven would be like when the angels and the saints gather around the throne. It was that intense. You, you really believe that no matter how enthusiastic they were, it compared to heaven? Come on, Sean. Come on, Mr. Bolts. Why? I mean, just why? Mm. What's wrong with you people? Why does everything have to be um, embellished? Why isn't it just, you know, this is what happened. And it, everything has to be miraculous and everything has to be uh, feeling and this thick presence and this 
you know, these things. Uh... <clears throat> After that powerful moment, the students just broke out into more and more and more worship singing, Great Are You, Lord. The impression was clear that the, they simply couldn't contain their love and gratitude, gratitude for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, pouring out their worship on the one who saved them, set them free, and gave them new life. Some skeptics have said, you know, let's wait and see if this really is a move of God or not. But we also have seen some of the most loved pastors and leaders. Okay. <laughs> Why? Why not? What is well, The Bible says, judge nothing before the appropriate time. He's going to make a lot of claims in this video that um, are they going to come true? And if they do, does that validate this man? No. The Bible says that if anyone, if a, if a false prophet comes forward and tells you something that does come to pass, but yet they tell you to follow after other gods, don't listen to them for the Lord your God is testing you. And if it doesn't come to pass, it ain't going to matter to the followers of the false prophets. Put their approval on it, but even more, they're hungry as they visited this. And I love that leaders from the Toronto, uh, you know, outpouring in the Brownsville revival, many leaders from those movements went. Well, so what, what he's talking about is NAR, um, false apostles and prophets who uh, signed off on the Holy Ghost bartender, Rodney Howard Brown, and shakings and violent shakings and manifestations rolling on the floor barking like dogs flapping like chickens and clucking like chickens so a false ipad prophet is using other nar false apostles and prophets to validate this which actually affects the credibility everything that any one of these false prophets have said has has affected the credibility to experience Asbury revival. And they were Instagramming their experience and, and both of those particular movements and also HIM with pastor Cheon, they all said that they just experienced more hunger. And some of them brought it back to their churches and their movements and said, we need to be hungry for the presence of God as well. This is making me so hungry. And some of them are, are having many outpourings with their churches, the church I went to on Sunday morning, uh, which isn't our, our normal church that we go to, but the pastor at higher vision church in Valencia, California started to begin to share about how he was really awakened by the Asbury revival. And he didn't even go there, but it was just making him so hungry and thirsty for the presence of God. And over the weekend, they had 50 spontaneous baptisms of people who ran to the baptismal and wanted to get baptized in their clothes on a cold, freezing California day. And they had towels for I lived in California for uh, the better part of close to 10 years. I haven't been there in a while, but I don't know what part of California he's talking about to have a cold, freezing California day. Because I never experienced a cold, freezing California day. Not one time. Um, it's not the Arctic. It's not even Illinois. This man is not rooted and grounded in reality. Them as they came out, but they, they each person on Saturday night and both services Sunday morning who were baptized and gave their lives to Jesus or rededicated their lives, you could feel that tangible presence of God. So I even experienced it in the local church that we went to on Sunday. And I just believe that we have this hope in this generation. There's a contagious move of God that's coming. And I love the social media is what's what people are saying. Well, lots of the outpouring leaders when they went, um, I like their comments about really spiritual hunger. That was one of the main comments I, I saw a lot of the people that are leaders of the body of Christ said that they experienced the spiritual hunger by going. And when they were there, they felt the presence of God in a way that was unusual and helped them. And I think that's really powerful. I, I didn't get to go. A lot of my friends who went uh, sent me texts and I, I asked if they could pray for me for impartation for our family and for our ministry and what they're experiencing. And I felt a fresh touch of God. So my wife, Cherie, we were just You want them to pray for you while they're at an, a, an alleged revival for you to have a fresh touch to, of God and you felt something. Hey, they're at the revival and they're praying for us. Did you feel that? I thought I felt that too. Did you? You did too? I mean, this is like making something other than God your source and your provision. Like needing not just... Mul not just middlemen, but multiple middlemen, you know, um, but the Bible says there's one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. I don't know why you would be so hungry if you're not only if you're not eating every day, even if you're not, you know, um, in fellowship with God daily, all day <laughs> in every aspect of an arena and area of life.
I don't, I don't get this pe- this alleged leadership being in in a starvation, malnutrition condition from the Lord. This is like an events based um, psychosis. Just so, just I don't know. Again, the word hungry. We just got so hungry for God and felt a renewed sense. I mean, we we always feel close to God, but we read your Bible. Read your Bible. I know that's kind of a crazy idea because we haven't heard any scripture in any of this. Um, read your Bible if you're hungry. That's the that's the the bread of life. You know, thou shalt not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You got a whole buffet there to read and study. It's not enough. The word of God is insufficient. The work of God is insufficient for these people. Christ's finished work. We felt a renewed sense of dedication to the season to really follow him in a way that is profound. Well, Matt Brown, he was on our show just recently here, and he tweeted me last night, and this is what he said, and he brought to my attention. He said, I believe Asbury students will continue to experience revival, and they are having services still. They're just not open to the public or to people of older age. But it's a different revivals have had different frequency of meetings. Many met one time a day or a few times a week. He said, I believe those who meet at nearby churches will as well. In the 1997 Asbury revival, the students traveled and shared their testimony at other schools and churches, and waves of revival hit those places as they simply shared, this will happen again, and it already is. He said, in the 30 plus schools that have had some moves break out, many of those will continue and spread. The Jesus Revolution movie, he said, is going to stir hunger in the older generation to pray for revival again. And we're seeing that over the weekend. Asbury College and uh, Collegians warned that some leaders are trying to claim the revival is going to continue with their own events. But that's not how it works. God loves to use the humble and the simple. I believe it will spread by. So, so he just said, God loves to use the humble and the simple. But this, you know, notorious, irrefutable false teacher is going to give you his prophetic perspective on what's going to happen. That's not very humble. <laughs> the The arrogance and pride in the false prophets and false apostles is, is mind boggling that they can shame and blame and ridicule discern discerning people, which, which, and they can actually um, encourage people to violate the commands of Jesus in Matthew 24, when he told his disciples to beware that no one deceives you. And in Matthew chapter 24, read it, that that many false prophets will come in my name and, and, and do many miracles, many signs and wonders and deceive many. And you can't, when you tell people to, to neglect the commands of Jesus and the warnings of Jesus, that's very irresponsible and very unprophetic. The, the most with students and unknown vessels, those who try and claim it or take ownership may be used of God, but it won't be the same as the impressive wave of God's spirit. Lastly, Matt brings us attention that Dutch sheets, I love this, prophesied in 2001 and shared again in January, one of the most powerful visions God. Dutch sheets, Dutch sheets. You gotta be kidding me. Notorious false Trump prophet. Notorious um, and of the worst variety of Christian nationalist. Um, and a, a ravening false prophet who, who never, who, who's always talking about dreams and visions. He's trying to tie himself into this too for his own name and notoriety that was ever given to him was that revival on campuses were going to come like we've never known and they would pop up one after another and then after another and they would connect even or they would not even be connected with each other and matt says i'm hoping there will be some of that unrelated and god will be glorified that no man or institution can lay claim to the mighty work he's already doing i believe all these will spread into a national great awakening greater than any in history and the marks of revival and the great outpouring of god's spirit repentance and course being compelled to spread the gospel to those who need it so I want to give a little bit more, more of my perspective. You can see on the screen here, these are different campuses now that are having this like extended time. Some of them are like in their 80th hour or their 100th hour. Some are just doing one night a week. Some are doing every night. But I love that there's campuses. Even Yale is experiencing some stuff. Stanford, Texas A&M. So Lee University has uh, has been going protracted and they're experiencing the same kind of awakening, but they're opening it up to the public as well. So it's a place that people can go to. They were really inspired by Asbury. And I just think it's so profound that so many schools are experiencing this. 
and that this is not normal. We know that this is not normal. And I think, you know, first of all, an army can't go into battle if its members are wounded. And I feel like there's a reversing of the dual plagues of disconnect from God and anxiety about what's happening in the world. And this is happening through these renewals is that there's, there's, there's a healing. This phase of awakening is like a holy hospital in some ways, bringing some deeply needed spiritual and emotional healing for this generation, especially for those who've been wounded by church or religion, people who feel, haven't felt a real connection to Jesus, people who've never dedicated their life, but they grew up in Christianity, but they've never. This is what happens when, when you forsake the word of God. You know, the Bible warns that my people perish for lack of knowledge. So even if this continued to go on and like many types of movements of this nature in the past, or even times when people think they have, or they actually have given their lives or intended to give their lives to Christ, there's no discipline. People, people never, never disciple these people. These people come forward and make professions of faith are just turned loose with no biblical instruction, no follow through, no follow up. Okay, I've seen it a million times. People go out and preach the gospel and then then they never get contact information. They never follow through with people. And you have people out there thinking that they're following Christ and they don't even know Christ. Because they're, they're, you just got infants turned loose who never become toddlers or never become young adults who never mature. And these people don't care because it's all for the show. Never really made a decision for Christ to sell or buy in totally and say, you can have my whole life, God. Secondly, the Bible model couldn't be clear. It start in Jerusalem, then move to Judea, and then to the ends of the earth. So if God wants to start at Christian campuses, then move out from there. I think we older members of the church need to step up to the plate and pray fervently for the next phase. That something's going to happen after these college campuses have this awakening. We're going to start to see other spheres of influence being affected, which is so p profound. And we're already seeing it a little bit. So far, the awakening has already spread in power, and we're seeing that. So if The awakening has already spread. But where's your devotion to discipling these young people so that they're not starved if they're they're not starved if they're not at a revival and experiencing something of an outpouring um i haven't been to a revival and i don't feel starved i don't i don't feel like like the the lord and i have not been in communion and connection all day today okay i, I don't feel like i'm abandoned and forsaken i, I don't feel stress and anxiety i don't feel fear of the things going on in the world why because i have a mature faith in christ that he is my savior and my redeemer and my deliverer and like the word of god says he who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it so but i've been discipled i've been taught the word of god i've been brought up to a level of maturity to the full stature not the fullest of statures, but a more full stature. That's not something that just happens without interaction, without people discipling people and training people and getting people's focus off of feelings and experiences. Because if you live off feelings and experiences, you will die because you must become mature. You can't leave toddlers and infants who, who aren't even crawling out there without without discipleship. That's the, that's the neglect of modern Christendom, the neglect of discipleship and training. If it's spread in power, and I'm going to read some of the universities, Lee University, Samford University, Cedarville University, Texas A&M, Eastern Kentucky University, Valley Forge College, Hannibal LaGrange University, and the University of Cumberland, among other locations, even some middle schools and elementary schools, which we won't bring too much attention to because we want it to stay really pure there. But there's, uh, you know, they've been forcing, posting about outpourings in all these campuses, plus, again, 30 altogether that we've heard of so far, and there's campuses I haven't heard of that I'm sure are experiencing as well. It's clear to me that God's on the move and that this generation of young believers wants Jesus. And they're, they're really getting quite an awakening to gratitude for who God is. They're full of new life, full of new hope, and they're containing something in their spirit that I believe that's a true revival that's begun in their hearts. They're praising Jesus no matter what. There's no celebrity leading them. There's no politician leading them. There's no church leader that's the one who... What, what Jesus? What Jesus? Because when they say Jesus, who are they talking about? Their buddy, their text buddy, their, their, their homie, their, their gal pal, because there's a lot of other Jesus out there, especially in this younger generation, especially.
the idea that Jesus is just some some hippie who hippie text buddy. You're saying, follow me. This is like an organic move where people are meeting with Jesus. And because, you know, Asbury is not really done, they're just changing the form of how they're including people. I believe that the revival there is not done, as well as revival that's pouring out or outpouring, whatever language you want to use for it, the Holy Spirit's on the move. As Christians, we're witnessing a powerful move of God among younger generations. The Holy Spirit's on the move. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, how do you, how do you, uh, this man is different generation and they brought together thousands of young souls who are hungry for Jesus and thirsting for his presence. And throughout this awakening, we've seen a number of God incidents that have been too perfect to be coincidence. And I think that that's really important. This um, yeah, too perfect to be coincidence. Yeah has been labeled as anxious and depressed, but Asbury Awakening, we've seen these young people find freedom and hope in Jesus. An outpouring of love and worship during the final night of the event was a testament of the deep transformation that's taken place in their hearts. It was evident that they were marked by God and would never be satisfied. And if the old 1970 Asbury revival was any indication, so many prominent church leaders in different regions today came out of that just very short revival that happened back then. And I mean, I know two people who came out of it and they're ministers today and theologians today. And I think who's going to come out of this one who's going to impact not just the church world or theology world, but the whole world. And I think it's really important to see that God's raising just because somebody can come out of something and impact not just the church world or the American world or whatever, but the whole world it doesn't necessarily mean that's a good thing. People up and he's doing some things that are just have never been done before. And I hope you guys are as excited as I am. If you watch some of the naysayers online, again, ask yourself the questions. What are they looking for? What do they think an outpouring looks like or a move of the Holy Spirit? Okay. If you watch some of the naysayers online, even if even if you're not saying yay or nay, you're you're even if you are maintain a neutral position, which that's pretty much the position I've taken is a neutral position. I'm not saying yay or nay. You're a naysayer, unless you're saying something positive. That's why these people are false prophets, because they won't give a person a prophecy that corresponds with reality. They only tell people. You know, God's going to use you in a mighty way. God's got to get, you know, I think you have a prophetic gift. I think, I think God's calling you to be an apostle. I think God's calling you to be a pastor. You know, that's all they, that's all they consider prophecy to be is a motivational speech. It looks like, have they visited and do they still have the same kind of report? Because the ones that I'm seeing that have visited everyone from, again, Pastor Cheon to Toronto. Al Pastor Cheon. So he's talking about the one they call Apostle Cheon, the false apostle, false NAR apostle. That's his testimony. That's who he's hearing from. Pouring people, the Pensacola Revival people, then a lot of mainstream theologians and, and leaders, a lot of pastors from around the world. I'm seeing people like, you know, Greg Laurie, even, you know, just different people who visited and they were really gripped with just. What is it? What, I mean, what is the testimony of, of the false apostle supposed to mean? Even Greg Laurie, I mean, what, what does his testimony mean to anyone? It's, it's not supposed to be the testimony of man that we're supposed to go by is a confirmation of the spirit. There's hunger for souls, hunger for Jesus. And that's what we want. That's what a true revival is. So I think it's so profound. And I want to encourage you guys to just keep your hearts open because I don't think it's over. I think maybe a campus near you or a church near you might have an experience with the presence of God in a strong way. I'm going to encourage you to visit. A false prophet is completely unqualified. Completely unqualified. You are unqualified to give anyone. What's wrong with you people? to give anyone a definition of what true revival is because you definitely have the wrong definition of what genuine prophecy is. Be hungry and visit if you can visit. If it's something that's near you, visit. If, it's, if some of you are so hungry, I mean, I, I know, again, the university is open and several other universities, Texas A&M, there's a circuit writer team from YWAM who's been there and they've reported incredible things, healings and mass salvations. I was just seeing on my Instagram, Huntington Beach, and there's groups out there with hundreds of people gathered around them for the third weekend. Uh, people getting saved just walking by. There is a move of evangelism that's happening both on the streets, on campuses. Well, y'all, um, God is always on the move. And when God is on the move, Satan is also on the move. And the false prophets are on the move. The false prophets like Sean Boltz, the NAR iPad prophet, and Chris Yoon, uh, Marcus Rogers, I think even Isaiah Saldivar, 
weighed in and gave this their blessing, their unconditional, un, unmerited blessing, no matter what. So I'm sure that God has done some very real things. But I'm sure the enemy has also done some very real things. And I'm sure that through Sean Bowles and other NAR wolves that some some bad and negative and things of the enemy have taken place when they attack anyone who brings uh, the slightest amount of skepticism upon what is happening in the earthly realm. They even attack people who maintain neither a, neither a yay nor nay position, but a, a position of neutrality and wait and see. Even that is inappropriate to them. This type of rush to judgment, this type of um, this must be from God mentality, that's, um, that's dangerous and that's cultish. That is actually cultish. It has nothing to do with your faith because you want to confirm that something is from God. First John chapter four, verse one says, beloved, believeth not every spirit, but test the spirits to see if they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. Jesus, like I said, in Matthew 24, warns people not to be deceived. This is brother Rob Wilson, grace, peace, and love in Jesus name until next time.